In this video, we're going to compare some of the differences between the Earthscape's photo imaging software and the Pro Landscape photo imaging software. Now, in a later video, what we'll do is we'll, we'll compare the, the CAD portions of both programs. So it's going to be the uh, Corel Designer uh, compared to the Pro Landscape Planner. The, what you see in front of you here is called Pro Landscape Image Editor. Okay, now one of the main differences between the programs is uh, with the Pro Landscape program, it's uh, built from the ground up as being a landscape design program. So it's not sitting on top of another design program such as Corel Photo Paint. Now, because of that, the things that we use here, they're all landscape specific tools. So if we go up to my EasyScape toolbar here on the left side, you'll see that I have my, my grass tool my draw mulch tool, my draw edging, here's my retaining wall tool, my paver tool, and a tool to place the before image, like so. Okay, so they're very uh, easy uh, landscape tools that we have to use there. Another thing that you'll find with the Pro Landscape program is we have over 14,000 images to use within the library. That's plants and pavers and all of the, the different types of materials that we have at our disposal. With Earthscapes you may have uh, four to six thousand images, well with Pro Landscape you have over fourteen thousand. That image library is... Uh, to find uh, plants you can go down here to the bottom and you'll see uh, we have uh, several tabs here for say our favorites which would be our commonly used plant materials. We have a plants tab and these are all broken up into uh, specific categories. Now this you don't have to set up out of the box, these are already set up uh, in specific categories. So if you're trying to find a, a deciduous shrub, you just select that, and within a few seconds, it will load uh, the deciduous shrub library. Okay. Now you'll see here that if I drag that up, you'll see that there are literally uh, hundreds of uh, different types of shrubs, and they all are very specific varieties. Okay. Right now, uh, you, depending on the, the area of the country that you're from, uh, you may not be able to, to use all of the plants here. So within Pro Landscape, if we go up to the Tools menu and select Climate Zone, you can select your specific climate zones. With Earthscapes, you select whether you want north or south. If you select north, you're probably going to get zones 1 through 8. If you're doing the south, you may see uh, zones 9 and 10. Okay, so with Pro Landscape, you s select the climate zone specifically that you want to see, and you don't see the other plants. So with Earthscapes, if you're, say, in a zone 5, you're going to see all the zones 1, 2, and 3, as well as zones 5. Okay, as I mentioned previously, we also have a Favorites tab here. So your Favorites tab, that's where you're going to store your commonly used uh, favorite plants. Okay, and to create a favorite, you just go to the plant that you want to add to the favorites and you simply right click on it and go to add to favorites and then when you go back over to your favorites library it will show up in your, here with the rest of your, your commonly used plants. With Earthscapes you do have uh, cloning tools. With Pro Landscape, uh, let me go ahead and show you a couple of the uh, cloning tools that we have here. Now let's say for example that I have an existing uh, shrub or tree here and I need to uh, to cover that up. Well, with both programs, what you'll need to do is you'll need to select uh, something from the original background in order to cover that up. Okay, so you just can't uh, go to a, a tree and, and erase it and expect the, 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 the program to know what is behind that tree. So in this case, what is supposed to be behind that uh, shrub there is a, a, a stone wall uh, so we're going to have to use part of that stone wall to paint over the top of that, just like you would in Earthscapes. But we, the tools, they work a little differently, and I want to highlight those. So uh, one tool that we uh, can use here is if we go up to the Draw menu and go down to Cloning Tools, I'm going to use the Rectangle Area tool. Okay, with the Rectangle Area tool, you just drag a rectangle around the source area that you want to capture and then you create a new object and then you can drag that over the top of that just like that. So it's just creating a patch that you're putting over the top of it. 
Okay. Another technique that we can use here is uh, we can go up and we'll go to our fixed square clone brush. Okay. Now with this I'm just going to simply drag a box around the area that I want to use as my source area. And then I go over here and you'll see I have a little pencil cursor and I just click and then it starts to paint that wall right over the top of that shrub like so. Okay. And I can move that and adjust it if necessary. I could have also used that same uh, a clone brush uh, instead of a clone brush, I'm sorry, uh, you can use a irregular shape which is the little scissor tool here and I'm going to just cut out an area of this stucco and yeah, let's go up a little farther like so and create a new object and then I'm going to pull that down and just cover up that gas meter like so. Okay, so uh, other things that I could do here is I could uh, cover that up uh, using this rectangle area tool with a little concrete there. And just drag that over the top of it like so. So now my shrub is uh, completely gone. Okay, now once I have uh, everything covered up that I need covered up, it's always a good idea to flatten those items to the background. And the way that I do that is simply right click I select the items, right click, and go to flatten selected objects. And I'll click yes, and then that makes that permanently part of the background. So you'll see here that I can't click on things to select it. Okay, so our cloning tools do work a little differently. Uh, there may be some more flexibility as far as the cloning tools. Okay, so uh, what we want to do next is I, I just want to run through a, a quick project to, uh, to show you uh, how everything works here. Okay, so now that I've, I've flattened those, let's go ahead and add some uh, materials here. We're going to select our EasyScape Grass tool, and I'll just go ahead and click OK here, and I'll just select a grass pattern like this, uh, this grass pattern here, and I'm going to use this polygon tool and just cover the grass area like so. Alright, then I'll right click and set that down. I can go in and I can adjust I can adjust those grass points very easily uh, with that uh, uh, those little green adjustment points. I can also come over here to this image tab and I can change uh, the, the brightness of that. So if I'm wanting something that's a, a little brighter or darker, we can do that pretty easily but by manipulating these sliders over on the far right side of the program. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, let's put a couple plants in there. So uh, I can either work for my favorites and simply drag something up to the project, scale it up to the appropriate size. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and drag a couple shrubs up here, scale it up, and you'll see that if I just uh, click here and rubber stamp that, it places additional uh, shrubs there. Now we have a little trick if, as far as uh, when we have something that we have, say, three or more of an item, what we can do is we can right-click on something here and select Duplicate and Randomize. Okay, now what I want you to do is watch what happens as I come across here. Now you see this is all a carbon copy of the same plant. Now when I do a right-click, you'll notice that it flips some of them around, it changes the size just slightly on those, so it doesn't look like a carbon copy of the, the one next to it so it, it will give it a more natural look. If you go in and you want to place mulch in here again you just use one of our specific tools like the EasyScape mulch tool. Okay that loads our mulch library. Okay I'll go ahead and click OK there and you'll see here I have uh, uh, several different uh, mulch items to choose from. I'll just go ahead and select uh, this one here and I'm going to click in around here like so and you'll see that it places the mulch and it knows that mulch goes down below uh, the grass, or I'm sorry, down below the, uh, the plant materials but on top of the grass. Okay, so you don't have to uh, really think about that too much. With Earthscapes, uh, you create a separate layer and then you paint on a grass or a mulch pattern and then 
you know you you can manipulate that later on but with ours it's managing all of that for you and you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about uh, creating it on a separate layer and, and uh, adding new layers and that type of thing okay now something else that we can do in pro landscape very easily uh, is if we go up here to the uh, easyscape uh, wall tool this will load our wall library and these are repeatable wall patterns opposed to uh, some that are just a, a photo of a say a curved wall or something like that when we have a repeatable pattern we can we can do a lot more with it okay I'm going to use this freeform curve tool and you'll see here we have an awful lot of different uh, wall patterns to choose from okay so you have a, a good variety with uh, earthscapes I think you only have a few uh, uh, to choose from I'll just go ahead and select one here Okay, and then uh, with this tool, I'm just going to click along the front of this bed like so. Okay, I'll just drop that down. Now that's not quite as tall as I wanted, so what I'm going to do here is I'll come over here to the workspace, and we're going to uh, enlarge that wall, so we'll give it a little more height. Okay, now once we do that, we can come in and if we need to change that curvature a little bit, I can do that there. Also, we can change the scaling the uh, horizontal scaling of that wall to make those stones uh, either really wide or uh, pretty narrow so we can, uh, we can change that pretty easily again just like we did with the grass if I need to change the the coloring of that wall I can go over here to this image tab and I can grab the hue and you know I can change the color maybe uh, this is not uh, the wall that I used is not the same manufacturer that you use you can go in and select something similar and uh, adjust the coloring of that wall pretty easily okay we also have the ability uh, when whenever we do walls we can add a slope to this wall so let's say I want this wall to have a slope we can right click on it and we can go in to pattern and slope and then we choose a sloping style I'll just choose a, a style 3 which is going to slope down and to the left Okay, and I get these points here. I can go in and I can make that appear that there's a little bit of a slope there, like so. Okay, one major difference between uh, Image Editor and uh, the Earthscapes and Photo Paint is that as we put things on uh, the project, the program is keeping track of a lot of these things, uh, and it makes it estimating uh, very easy uh, in order to create an estimate from this image design. Okay, so it's going to estimate the plants, uh, and it's going to be very specific about uh, what plants we used on here because it's all uh, uh, pulled out of the database. Uh, it's already set up uh, when you purchase the program. So uh, one thing that we can do here is if I come up to this tree and I want to define the size of that tree, you'll see, if I right click on it and go down to set or select size, I can tell it that I want say a 10 gallon tree. Okay, it didn't change the look of that tree. It's still, uh, it's going to be represented as that, that uh, size there. Now you could go in if you want to, you know, plant a larger tree you could you could do that pretty easily uh, by by you know just making it uh, larger on your canvas there okay so I I placed a tree on there it placed it at whatever the default size was in the database which you can change uh, that default size to a 10 gallon so that every time you put it on the drawing it comes in at a 10 gallon uh, but in this case what we did is we went in and we changed the size from a one and a half inch caliper tree to a 10 gallon tree. Okay, now let's go ahead and create an estimate based on this plan. Okay, so I have a wizard here, which is the instant proposal button here uh, found on the Easyscape toolbar. When I click on that, okay, it'll ask me to select a customer name, or I can add a new one with this green plus sign up here. Okay, and then within a matter of a few seconds, it will uh, create a, uh, a proposal uh, based on the plan that we just did there. So part of the proposal is that there's a cover page created with the customer's name and that project picture. Okay. I also have a project detail report. All right. We'll go ahead and close that. Okay. Here's my material list. 
Okay. Now this is something. It's called our project detail. Or, sorry, plant information report. Now this is something that uh, uh, you cannot do within Earthscapes. Now if you subscribe to Horticopia, uh, you could uh, take the the uh, the information into Horticopia and, and create a plant information report from there. But with Pro Landscape, all of this is included with the software. So each one of the items in our database has specific data behind it, such as the, a, a good general description of the item, what climate zones it's it's grown best in, uh, whether you need uh, uh, what kind of sunlight you need, soil conditions, and so on. So everything in the database has data behind it. Okay. Now this is a good thing to uh, to give to your customer after you finish a project, so that they'll know uh, what to expect out of that plant. And also, it gives them a uh, a printout of all the plants that they have uh, in their garden. Okay. When I close that, now I have my my quote here, and my quote uh, again. Uh, this was generated from uh, the image editor project. It has all of my daylilies and my mulch. Uh, has the grass. Has my my block uh, wall. Uh, as the boxwoods and the apple service berry. And you'll see here I had changed that apple service berry size to a 10 gallon size so it kept track of that for me. Now in our database uh, everything that we ship it uh, in the database has a five dollar price tag so you will need to set up your local pricing uh, uh, for uh, the items that you uh, commonly use uh, so that it will keep track of that and then the next time that you generate a quote it's going to use those tr prices if you change those in our main database. Now because we've estimated uh, from an image, the image uh, because it is not a scaled drawing like what we would do uh, on the CAD side of the program, uh, it doesn't really know how to calculate things that have scale such as this block wall or the grass or mulch. So what it does here is it puts a quantity of one uh, in for each one of those. Okay, but the plant material, like the daylilies, the boxwood, and the, uh, the tree here, it went ahead and kept track of all of that for us. And it's easy to go in and, and modify uh, the quantities on those. We just click over here to the pricing tab, and we go over here to mulch, and we're going to say that that's uh, two and a half uh, cubic yards of mulch. On the, uh, the grass, we're going to say that's uh, 45 square uh, yards of mulch, I'm sorry, of grass that we're going to need. And then that block wall, I'm just going to estimate that at uh, say 75 uh, square feet, and that's face feet of, of wall there. Okay, all right, and then when I just click over to my preview, it should automatically update those quantities. Now to do the pricing, uh, if I want to change the uh, the price on the, uh, the item, I can go in and I can just click on the the list price for the item and let's go ahead and charge $25 for that daylily and you'll see when I click over here it automatically updates that uh, to the $25 and, and extends the price and gives me an accurate total okay so as you can see it's very easy to create the uh, estimate based on our imaging design which is no way possible to do that uh, on the Earthscapes program uh, within the imaging program Okay, let's go ahead and go back here to uh, to the imaging program. Now, when you purchase the program, uh, you will have uh, uh, free technical support, and you will also get uh, uh, lots of uh, video tutorials. Now, our video tutorials are found down here at the bottom. Now, uh, if you have went out to YouTube, there's, there's video tutorials out there, but they're not going to be as detailed as the ones that you have here. Included with the program, you have uh, around six hours of video tutorials to, to walk you step by step through here. Now, with Image Editor, if I click on there, you'll see that you know there's uh, videos specifically on you know doing uh, edging, retaining walls, and so on. And you'll see here there's there's a few more on the second page. So uh, uh, within uh, all of the video tutorials, including the CAD imaging and estimating, uh, there's uh, roughly six hours of video tutorials, and it's all a er narrated video, just like the one that you're watching here. Okay. Now, uh, finally, uh, the uh, one of the big features that you're going to see uh, in Image Editor or in Pro Landscape that you cannot get into uh, Earthscapes is the ability to take this design 
and uh, move it over to a tablet. So if you have a, a design done here, you can move it over to the tablet, and after it's been moved over to a tablet, such as an iPad or an Android tablet, you'll still be able to go in and manipulate uh, the, the plant materials and move those around and, and that type of thing. Also, if you have an iPad or an Android tablet, you can take a, a, a photo uh, with that. You can bring it into the app. Uh, so within your tablet, you can do a design there. Now, it doesn't do everything that we can do here in Image Editor, like uh, it doesn't do the, the lighting and, and uh, you, you're not going to be able to add perspective currently to the, to the walls uh, and patios. Uh, but as far as uh, placing plant material, you will be able to, uh, to do that uh, on your tablet, assuming that you have an iPad or an Android uh, tablet. So that is something that uh, is just not available uh, with the Earthscapes program. I hope this video tutorial has been informative and uh, I hope it will help you make up your mind whether to uh, migrate over to the Pro Landscape software. Uh, check out the uh, video tutorial uh, comparing the Corel uh, Designer with the, uh, the Planner CAD program. Thank you.